This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. We're going up to, to meet somebody, and God just takes our peace. It's like Mary and I start squirming in our seat in the car, and we're supposed to be there for dinner in 20 minutes, and I'm squirming, and I'm not late. She says, I can't take it. Turn around the exit call. I'm, I'm going to call and tell them we can't come. We go off the exit, go back on, begin going on the highway. As soon as we get on the highway, going the other way, State Patrol pulls us over and thinking, man, I didn't even get up to 45 yet. <laughs> and and there's, a, there's a black sports car that he that he, this guy is screaming at the guy and then comes up and said, did you see him? No. Well, he was heading at, at, your, at you at 105 miles an hour. You see, following the peace of God, God put us in a place. How many know that guy didn't drive off after that? They probably ended up carting him off to jail. And then he went back and started screaming at the guy as we drove off. We didn't wait to see what, but, but because we, we, we sensed the peace of God being pulled back, we corrected ourselves and said, okay, we're not going here because God is telling us something is wrong. It was a setup. We were supposed to die. And because we obeyed the peace of God, God had that state trooper there and nailed him before he could get to us. Because in the minivan, you clip the back corner, but we go tumbling at 70 miles an hour on the highway. Bad news for us. But God was there. You see, God is there. We, we, we see things in the book of Acts of people having visions of people being teleported. Come on. He, did, he didn't wait for Uber to show up to take him to go talk to the man. It says, I'm here, I'm there. And it's still happening today. I've got reports of a man in Texas, and this was back in the, in the 80s. He's an oil man. And he gets ready to step off a rig, and when he sets his foot down, he's in the jungles of Africa. How I many know oh, that's a rude awakening? <laughs> and there's a young black man there that is crying out to know Jesus, and so he shares Jesus with him, leads him to the Lord, and when he turns to walk away, he's back on Texas mud. Wow. And so he's an oil man, he looks at his cowboy boots and says, that ain't Texas mud. Has it analyzed? It's and there are components in it indigenous to Africa. 20 years later, he goes to Africa on a missionary trip, and as he said, the strapping uh, black man that was a preacher come up and running to him, and he said, I've been waiting all these years to thank you for sharing Jesus with me in the middle of the jungle. Those are the kind of things we're going to begin walking in. Amen. I'm not looking to astral project when you can portal. <laughs> I've got one I'm still trying to wrap my head around because what I'm trying to do is build your faith, okay? I'm up in Canada ministering the gospel up at Kevin Tabucci's church, and I'm staying at his house, and I call Mary's kind of sick and stuff, and, and I don't ever like being away from home, and, and she thought she was running a fever and, and all this stuff, and so I'm up in the middle of the night, I'm praying, I'm, I'm just agonizing over this, I'm a thousand miles away, I'm all the way up in Saskatchewan, 
You know, it's, it's in, in, in the winter time when just passing the coffee out the Tim Hortons window into the cab of the truck and the coffee's cold. <laughs> 35 below zero. It ain't right, okay? <laughs> so I, I'm up there and, and, and I, I am completely aware that I'm still laying in that bed, in that bedroom, and at the same time I'm walking through my house at nighttime. And it, it's not a vision. I can... I'm barefoot because I was in, 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 in bed with my pajamas on. I can feel the carpet in the, between my toes. I can smell my house. I walk through, I walk through the house at, at night. And I, you know, mind you, it's almost like a maze, but I, I know it, and I walk through it, and there's moonlight on Mary. I, and I, I, can, I even told her the top she wore to bed that night, that she's there. I lay hands on her and pray. She never wakes up. It's, you know. <laughs> Women snore sweetly, right? That's right. Amen. And uh, I lay hands on her. I, I can smell her, okay? There, you know, the, your, your wife has a scent. It is part of the, the feeling of home. And it, all my senses are involved. The minute I quit praying, I'm no longer there. And at the whole time this is going on, I am still aware that I'm laying in that bed. I'm not astral projecting. I don't know what it was. I call her the next morning. She said, the fever broke in the night. I'm doing fine this morning. You see, those are the things that are possible for us if we'll believe. But how do we get there? How do we get there? Can I, can I spend 20 minutes dealing on the, the how-to? I remember Brother Copeland years ago back in, in the charismatic movement. And I was part of the charismatic movement since about 78, okay? I remember when Kenneth Copeland was a young whippersnapper. And I was wet behind my ears. I had waterfalls going on. And he taught, you know, the just shall live by faith. And there's a lot of things that we can learn from the faith message. Brother Henry, I mean, he is, he is the epitome of learning how to live by faith. But there's a component of faith. Faith, we think, is just believing God for great big things. That is a component of faith that we're doing things for God, God always calls us to do that which we're not able to do without him. If you could do it by yourself, God didn't call you to do it. God always does that because we must be dependent upon him. But the apostle Paul in Romans, when he said, the just shall live by faith, he was quoting Habakkuk. And so I went back to see what Paul was quoting. And in Habakkuk, it does say, but the just shall live by faith. But I looked up the Hebrew. Im una, and I probably have it wrong. Rabbi will tell me here in a little bit. I speak Ozarkian Hebrew, okay? <laughs> the just shall live by his fidelity to the covenant. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There are two sides of faith. Believe in God for the impossible and be faithful to the covenant that he gave me in the word. And the more that I am faithful to the covenant, the more my faith works on this side, the greater things that I can do because I am faithful to him no matter what and I will not move from covenant. And you don't learn your fidelity during the good times. You learn them during the hard times. How many of us have been through some of them? Rabbi shared some of the hard times he went through, but because he would not deny the name of Yeshua, he was being tested his fidelity to the covenant. And when he proved himself faithful, how I many know God knew what he was going to do before he did, but you want to know the truth? I think a lot of times we go through it so that we convince ourselves of the deepest part of our man, our, our spirit, that we will remain faithful. And now it's not a matter of temptation. I, don't, I, do, I do not violate covenant. No, I don't violate covenant with God. I will not vi violate covenant with my wife. Boy, a preacher would, would just learn that all the scandal stuff would quit. You're in covenant. You're in covenant. You do not break covenant. You will give up your life before you break covenant. You will give up your life before you deny the name Jesus. 
and you will give up your life before you break covenant with your mate. Because you stood before the altar of God and said, this is forever. And I, I, I've done a few wedding ceremonies. I don't do a lot, but I tell them, I say, if you ever break it, I will hunt it down to enforce it. <laughs> Serious about covenant. How do you want to walk in greater faith? Be faithful. He who is faithful over little shall become a ruler over much. And you have to be faithful. Brother Henry has been faithful wherever God's called him to do. And I mean, leaving your family behind all the time. I tell him, you know, I, I love doing the conference to you, but at the same time, I'm miserable. I'm miserable. I can't sleep. I left my teddy bear up in Missouri. She's about five, six. Come on now. That's the way it's supposed to be. But I'm, I'm faithful. He was faithful to do what God told him to do. And that is the reason. In fact, I think one of the reasons that uh, right now God is having Henry, and I felt this down in Branson, God, you know, he's kind of doing the circuit. We have a whole new generation that needs to hear the stories because their generation is going to be required to walk in it. And they have not seen it from us. Come on. My generation, the generation before us, we have messed up bad. We let them take prayer out of school. Now they're shooting in schools. There should have been riots in the streets. The day the day approved abortion, it was time to abort the Supreme Court. Oh, no, they just, and it, you know, the Supreme Court does not make law. Listen to me, they do not make law, they give an opinion. And there's a lot of things being forced today in America as law that Congress has yet to pass one law on. I read where one minister that teaches all the time on the Constitution stuff, he was, he was touring the Supreme Court, and the tour guy said, and this is where laws are made. He said, excuse me, what's that big dome building over there? What do they do? Boy, she didn't like that question. Because this is where we, no, you don't make law there. They don't have the power to enforce law. They give a legal opinion. Oh, that's a whole different subject. What template do we go to? I call this the Cornelius template. We, we need to position ourselves for sudden, sustained, powerful movements of God. Okay? They do not happen by happenstance. Hear me. They are not random. They only spring forth on fertile ground. Cornelius was a Roman soldier. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius the Centurion, and he was in a rock band called the Italian Band. Now, he was in an all-Roman or all-Italian Roman band, which was 555 infantrymen and 66 cavalrymen, and he commanded, I think it's like 50 or so, was what a centurion is over. So he was a man of stature, of a larger one, and they were all true, true Romans. They weren't mercenaries. He was a citizen of Rome, born, raised Roman citizen. Okay. A devout man. Underline this and you're about devout. You want to be ready for the next move of God and for it to be sustained in your life. Devout has to be a part of the nomenclature of who you are. I think every generation is touched by the fire of God. But what we have never been taught is once the fire has come, it is our responsibility to keep it burning by our fidelity to the covenant. He was a devout man, one that feared God. Let me tell you something. Every time I get in the pulpit, I'm, I'm nervous. And you say, Mike, you should be able to do this stuff at your seat. Yes, you can throw a Bible at me in the middle of the night. I will set up in the bed, grab the Bible in midair, and wherever it opens up, I can preach out of it. That's not the problem. This is a sacred desk. When I get behind this desk, 
I am no longer speaking for Mike Lake. I am speaking for Almighty God. And one day I will have to stand before him and give an account of what I have spoken. And if I can't speak it out of the fear of God, I better go home. That's level one of the understanding of this. The second understanding to tie into what Josh was talking about, it's a term called a God fear. A God fear was a Gentile. Oh, he's a Roman soldier. He's a centurion. He's commanding a hundred men or whatever. But he has denied the gods of Rome. He turned his back on paganism. He's now serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's keeping kosher, he's keeping the feasts, he's keeping the Sabbath. When he's able to get up to Jerusalem, he's in the Gentile court worshiping. That is what a God fear is. A God fear does it all except he never was circumcised to become physically a Jew because it would have probably cost him and his family their status and everything else within Rome. And so he was a God fear. He did everything up to the point of becoming physically Jewish, and the synagogues were full of them. That's why the Apostle Paul would go into a synagogue, and he would first preach to the Jews, and then he would preach to the Gentiles about a greater circumcision, the circumcision of the heart that was only available through Messiah. Sounds like a good deal. Circumcision sounds rough when you're a grown man. Okay, circumcision of the heart is better. But let me tell you something. We have a lot of believers today that claim to be believers, but their heart has never been circumcised. Because once it's circumcised, everything that flows out of your heart is in line with covenant. Because everything you reproduce in your life comes from your heart. So he feared God with all his house. So his faith, his faith affected all the Roman citizens living in his home. His wife rejected the paganism, rejected the mystery religions, and was serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he gave much psalms to the people. And he prayed to God always. That's the template. That you are devout in your walk with God. We have got to make our spirituality first place in our lives. We are people of the word. We are people that have faith actions because faith, faith without works is dead. If you believe the word, you do acts of righteousness. Sometimes it can be getting in a semi and taking water to people through, un, 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 you know, we, we heard during lunch all the things that, that the what, Cajun army, that's faith. I serve Jesus. Jesus wants to help. I got a truck. Let's go, Jesus. And the Lord was behind him every step. And he'll tell you, it wasn't me. I got out of the way and it was Jesus. That's the way it's supposed to be. We, we have to be people that are devout in our faith. The word of God is true. I'm wrong. Anytime there's a disagreement between me and the word, I lose. Quick to repent, quick to correct. That I, the, the apostle James says, we need to approach the word with humility so they can be engrafted in us. As it's engrafted in us, it changes us. And we have, to, we have to have devotion and motion in the kingdom once again. That we've got to fear God once again. You know, I love, I love Mike and Jeannie to death. But if I'm preaching the word and they get offended at me and, and ask me never to come back, I won't give it a second thought. Because I won't change my message to make anybody happy. That's the one of the things that I've learned. <laughs> Unlike the modern mega church that looks at all of these statistics and, and demographics, well, the demographics can be wrong because they're all sinners. Amen. Come on now. You speak the truth because you're representing God. God judged the Levites in Malachi, which actually opened up for the whole concept of rabbis. Malachi, was ju or, or Malachi judged the Levites because they quit teaching the people what they needed to hear and started teaching them what they wanted to hear. 
and they violated the covenant that Levi had with God. And we can say, oh yeah, these Jews this, those, these Jews that. The church is just as guilty, if not more, in our era than they were during the book of Malachi. Because if we don't teach the people what they want, they'll leave and they'll take their pocketbooks with them. Don't build something that you can't keep going if you're faithful to God because it was never God's to begin with. I believe every ministry should try its best to run debt free. I'm finally to the place where we are, glory to God. It took a lot of planning, a lot of prayer, and, and a lot of different things, and, and I'm going to try my best. I am never going to go outside of what I can write a check for because I'm never going to, I, I never want that pressure of, boy, you know, God's given me this to preach, and, and I, I know I got a mortgage payment coming up. And boy, if I preach that, it may, I may have to go back into my banker. I, I made everybody mad. And, and they all left, and I got, I got $10. Can you imagine the pressure of that? And, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking down. I'm, I'm, I'm empathizing with them for the pressure. Some ministries, because of the staff and salaries and everything else, just to keep the doors open, they have to bring in a million dollars a month. And if you don't, lights go off. Families don't get fed. People don't have health insurance. All the, there's a lot of pressure with that. But man, if you can get it to where you operate in God's kingdom and, and don't build what you can't pay for. And that way there's not that pressure there because we got to stay faithful to what God tells us to do. And we have to walk in this fear of God. God notices your giving and this is alms. This is not the tithe. This was giving to the poor, those in need above the tithe. And later on, when the angel showed up, he says, heaven took notice of your alms. Heaven took notice of what you gave above the tithe because you just saw somebody in need and you had money in your pocket and you gave it to them and you forgot about your need. That gets God's attention. How many know we're called to be givers? And it's not because it's a lottery, we're not involved in Amway. Just put it in you. Come on. And some of them have taught it that way. I believe in the hundredfold return, but it doesn't have to be Ferraris. And to be, I, I'm older, okay? We don't need a Porsche. We will kill ourselves. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord, thou shalt get an SUV that is builteth like a tankist. Because we know it's the way you drive us, okay? We need to begin learning in, in that devoutness to God. Watchman E talked about, it's, it's in his book called The Releasing of the Spirit. Watchman E had some real neat ideas. Oh, that's Oriental. Let me tell you something. The Semitic Hebraic mindset is an Eastern mindset, not a Western mindset. Many times the Oriental mindset of people like that from China that discovered Jesus is closer to the mindset of Paul than we are. When Watchman Nee talked about authority, he goes all the way, he goes all the way back to the fall of man and, and, and hit something in the garden I never saw before. He said, when man was given the knowledge of good and evil, what it gave is man the ability to tell God, you're not going to choose what's good and evil, I will. kind of screams off the headlines today, don't you think? You see, only God can declare what's right and what's wrong. And he, he writes, he said, listen, when we, when we get saved, the problem is it's, it's like we're, we're a mini tabernacle, okay? Outer court, inner court, you know, the holy place. And then our spirit man is the holy of holies where, where, where the throne of God is. Our problem is that curtain has never been ripped open. <laughs> There's this big crusty area that, that's blocking your spirit from moving from your soul. We're like, we have like crusty barnacles matey over all of us because of the deep seas that we've been going into and, and how rough life was. And part of the breaking of learning to humble ourselves before God and breaking is God begins to break that shell so that we're no longer living by our soul, but we're living by our spirit. Because it's your spirit man that's connected to the third heaven, 
where the throne of God is, and you begin sensitive to what God is saying. You become sensitive. If, if we had that kind of discernment, there would be no more charlatans in the church. I don't care what you say. I don't care about the Rolex on your, on your arm, or sometimes they'll get an old beat up, you know, Timex, or, a, you know, just go, go with the other end. And you say all the right things. And, and I, I have known people in the Pentecostal movement that everybody thought was saved. And they're deacons in the church and everything else. And they got the Holy Ghost. And they just know how to shimmer and shake and use the language. No discernment. And they walk up and they're, I'm doing this for the Lord and I'm doing that for the Lord. You want to say, you can't do anything for the Lord because you're not even part of his kingdom. You've just, you've just learned the lingo and you've learned the mannerisms and you've learned the politics of what we call church. If we had discernment by the Spirit, I, guys, I, I've been in airports, and I'm thinking, I sense a believer here, and it feels familiar. I did that one time up in, I was, I was over in, in New York, I can't remember if it was LaGuardia, so I, I just hunted down the feeling. In the ancient plains of Shinar, an evil was born, the first world king the prototype transhuman, the ultimate despot, Nimrod. In Babylon, the son of perdition devised the Shinar Directive, a plan to enslave humanity and make war against the God of Heaven. God's intervention at the Tower of Babel only delayed Nimrod's hellish plans, as the powers of Mystery Babylon gathered to create the new Tower of Babel and to prepare for the son of perdition's return. Heaven is issuing a clarion call to the remnant. The Shinar Directive will reveal the strategies of the enemy that will help you untangle yourself from them and become the victorious church. It is time for the remnant to wake up, discern the times, and be infused with Heaven's power to withstand The Shinar Directive by Dr. Michael Lake. Get your copy today at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com that's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the Kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.